I hear whispers in the dark, fingertips on the surface of my mind. Whispers are louder. I will endure. They speak a word, a name. He's here. Welcome back, Guardians. Today we are discussing Eris's rock, what it is and what its function is. This script was created with the assistance of Anon Pig. He is the co-host of Destiny Lorecast, and his Twitter link is below. As usual, the artwork was created by Brandon McCammy. A link to his website is also below. If you want to pick up any of his artwork, Destiny or non-Destiny related. If you are watching this video within the first two hours of release, I will be streaming over on Twitch, and today is Mass Effect Mondays. Starting with Mass Effect 2, feel free to come and say hi. This is Mullen Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny Lore episode. Let's start with what we actually know about Eris' rock. Firstly, it is identical in appearance to that of a tomb husk. Tomb husks were introduced in the Taken King, and Guardians used them to open hive doors, or as seen in the Last Rites mission, summon a bridge into Crota's throne world. The best description of a tomb husk comes from the mission Lost to Light. In the mission, you access Toland's journal and actually hear Toland say, it has long been my belief that the binds which hold the greatest hive terrors could be lifted by releasing the energy stored within their tomb husks. So now we know that tomb husks contain powerful energy that can be released. However, the way that this sentence is worded, it has long been my belief, and it could be used to release the binds, gives me the impression that it is not the only use for a tomb husk. We the Guardian use it in that way, however that is because Tolan has suggested it to us. The Hive might use Tomb Husks in different ways, or Tomb Husks might have multiple functions. As I said before, we use it to activate the bridge in the Last Rites mission. My general interpretation of a Tomb Husk is that it contains concentrated energy that can be released to interact with other Hive technologies, for example binds or locks and bridges. Whilst it is not confirmed that Eris's rock is a tomb husk, there is a bounty that is called Husk Reaper, where we have to collect husk shards for Eris Morn. This could indicate that it is a tomb husk, and we are collecting husk shards for Eris, with her storing this energy inside the rock. The bounty requires you to kill Hive at any location and reads, The filth you collect holds no real value other than to remind the Hive that your light is to be feared, Eris. However, upon completion, it says, Thank you. For me, these are quite the treasure. Eris. Eris makes it quite obvious that the husk shards collected from defeated hive are only valuable to her. For me, these are quite the treasure. And I can't help but think it has something to do with her tomb husk looking rock. The speculation that Eris is collecting hive energy in the form of husk shards from defeated hive and storing it within her rock becomes more plausible if we dissect the word tomb husk. Tomb means an enclosure for a corpse cut into the earth or rock. The real world meaning for husk being the dry outer covering of fruits and seeds, I believe is a reference to the hive's outer layer, is a reference to their hollow appearance, their husk, hence husk shards are collected from dead hive. So if we put all this information together, Eris' rock looks like a tomb husk, there is a bounty that has us collect husk shards for her, and the definition of tomb and husk, it gives the impression that Eris Mort is charging or increasing the energy of her rock through having guardians collect fragments from dead hive. Why is she doing this? I'm not too sure. However, I do think that the energy she is collecting may be what provides Eris with extraordinary abilities. For example, she teleports Guardians during the Last Rites mission, a particularly surprising and powerful ability. Maybe she was able to release some of the energy from the Tomb Husk to achieve this. We can actually take this spin foil hat theory in a slightly different but equally interesting direction. For this other theory, we need to understand what Hive put inside rocks, or more accurately what Hive put inside crystals. Yep. Hive Souls. Crota's soul was trapped in a crystal during the final mission, The Awakening. We destroy the crystal to prevent Crota from being summoned to our reality. 
we also return to that same area to retrieve a chunk of crystal to fill with Crota's soul. That is in the last rites mission when we interrupt Crota's death ceremony. The crystal we fill with a portion of Crota's soul allows us to pretend to be ascended and enter Oryx's throne world. There's also evidence that this is not just ascendant souls kept within crystals, but even lesser hive have had their souls kept within a crystal. A ghost scan confirms this and says, Another soul confined in crystal, I thought only Ascendant Hive bore the honour of being trapped in a rock for centuries, but this is a lesser Hive, must have been a hard worker. The way that I consider Hive crystals is the crystal containing the Hive soul is what connects their netherworld to our reality. With the right ceremony, incantation, the Hive can be summoned from their netherworld to our dimension. That is why Crota's soul is in the crystal on the Mission Awakening, and why there is a large crystal in Crota's throne world. That is what connects both worlds, and also you probably have noticed that when you destroy one of the crystals, both are lost. For example, when you go back into Crota's throne world, in the mission Last Rites, the crystal is now missing. So, is Eris Morn holding someone's soul, waiting for the right moment to summon them back from the Hive Netherworld? She is the bridge, she is the connection to the Netherworld for this being. The idea that Eris is connected to someone in the Hive Netherworld is reinforced by the fact the Rock speaks to her. In the cutscene following the completion of the Coming War, Eris approaches the Vanguard. After Cade 6 kindly asks Eris to remove her Rock from the map, Eris says, It hasn't spoken since Crota fell. It speaks now because Oryx has arrived, come to fulfill the final covenant of his son. Eris's Rock speaks to her. What it says we cannot be certain of, however I get the impression that whoever is communicating with Eris was providing a warning, warning Eris of Oryx's arrival. In fact, I believe the whispers that Eris hears is being transmitted through the rock. During the coming war mission, Eris says this in game. I hear whispers in the dark, fingertips on the surface of my mind. Whispers are louder, I will endure. They speak a word, a name, he is here. Whilst we can't be 100% certain that the whispers haunting Eris is originating from the rock, or being transmitted through it, I do think it reasonable to speculate that when Eris says, it speaks now because Oryx has arrived, that that is connected to the whispers she hears when we very first encounter Oryx in The Taken King. I am aware that I have stacked speculation upon speculation at this point in time, however if you would like to keep diving down into this rabbit hole, let's continue. If you accept that someone is speaking to Eris through the rock, warning her of Oryx's arrival, so that she could inform the vanguard and consequently prepare guardians, who would it be? Well I'm sure you've already guessed that the most likely candidate would be Toland. Eris could potentially be safeguarding Toland's soul whilst he's in the netherworld. There are a couple of reasons to why this would make sense. Tolan was one of the initial members of Eris Morn's fire team who attempted to kill Crota. He was recruited by Eris Morn and Ariana 3 due to his immense knowledge of the Hive. He was the one who told the team of the Hive's throne world system and how to truly defeat Crota. However, Tolan's motives for joining Eris Morn's fire team is still being questioned because it appeared he was more concerned with learning the Death Singer's song from Ir Yort, a song upon learning that killed him. It is implied that Toland is now in the Hive overworld in the Ghost Fragment the Hellmouth. It reads, I too am detached from my source. The charming Iyot made her introductions and I was very pleased to meet her. We had a conversation, a little tete a a couple old wizards exchanging definitions. I defined myself a friend, she defined for me the quiddity of death and she sang the song of that fearful autonomy. Revelation my friends, it does go down hard. The definition killed me, the killing redefined me. This is the shape and the point of the tooth, nothing has ever lived that will not die. Now I fly between green black suns in the labyrinth beyond Crota's god star. This is the overworld, the sea of screams with the throne universes of the great high fester in eternal majesty. I move among them, I map the shapes and connections of this world. If you are familiar with the lore, you will also know that there are a number of Grimmel cards that are considered to be messages from Toland, messages from the hive overworld. However, we have never known how we have got these messages. 
I speculate that Eris has been able to communicate with Toland through the rock, which is a fragment, if not the entirety, of Toland's soul. Eris will be the one to pull Toland back from the overworld once she has collected enough energy from defeated Hive, aka Husk Shards. How did Eris Morn learn about this technique? Well, like everything else, she likely learned it from Toland's journal. In the Lost to Light mission, Eris says this, Hold fast to Toland's journal. It saw me through my time in the dark. It implies that Eris only survived her time trapped in the Hellmouth due to the knowledge she gained from Toland's journal. Eris possesses strange and different powers that are not seen in any other character. For example, in the Last Rites mission, the teleportation example. Consequently, is the rock that Eris carries around a creation from Toland's journal? Did Toland provide the instructions for this? Did Toland leave a breadcrumb trail for Eris to discover his ultimate plan? He always intended on meeting the Death Singer and dying. Maybe during his conversation with the Death Singer, he discovered a way to enter the Hive overworld upon death. He wanted to go there because he knew Oryx was a larger threat than Crota. He needed to infiltrate enemy lines and map the Hive overworld. But this would be completely redundant unless he had a way to return or communicate with our world. So he left behind his soul in a crystal that Eris discovered in her years trapped in the Hellmouth. And the map was Toland's journal. When the time is right, Eris will summon Toland back to our reality. She has already begun collecting the energy required to perform such a ritual. And who knows, maybe one day we'll sit down with Toland. Have a conversation, a little tete a tete, a couple old wizards exchanging definitions. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, leave the words old wizards to dream about meeting Toland in the flesh after Eris summons him back to our reality. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Molly Games. Peace.